Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Iowa Adventures, a world created and ruled by the Fae. I'm Jessica, also known as I Sneed Stars, and places like TikTok and Instagram and all that other uh, online stuff. And I will be your shenanigan sovereign tonight. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to run you through the shows that we have on our channel. Uh, so, Monday nights, the Iowa Adventures, except for next week, which is going to be a one-shot run by um, the Speed of Candy, which is that guy over there. And... That's going to be great. Okay. I'm Tuesday night is the state of the union, a shadow run campaign at 7 30 PM EST DM by at Cottlesworth. Uh, Thursday nights is the lost continent by uh, Mr. Markham at 9 PM EST. And Friday nights is the legends of Kralis at 10 30 PM EST, which is a TTRPG created and GM'd by Telerius game master. Alternating Sundays, we have our very own Mazrix 24's Rumors of Magic at 7.30 p.m. EST. And I think that's it right now, but I have a mini campaign sort of that I am currently working on. Uh, don't forget to follow us on TikTok and YouTube and our Discord to see other things like our after shows. And I am going to stop talking. Daniel, please take over. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Uh, tonight, I will be Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock, who uh, is just excited for an actual night's sleep, remembering who he is cuddled up with Faiza. I also do the tech, so when things happen, like <laughs> two players being in the wrong spot, that's totally my fault. You can blame me. Uh, I'll go fix that now, and I'll throw it over to Caro, who is in James's spot. Unmute. Hello, I'm Caro. I'm in James's spot, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be playing Gilly, who is the Water Genasi Barbarian. I am Imaginary Caro on TikTok and Corner Caro everywhere else. That was all out of order. James, go for it. Hi, I'm James. Uh, now no longer playing uh, in Muriel Gilly's space. Uh, but uh, yeah, so tonight I'll play either... Um, or of Dezark, our human druid, or Varian Arbor, our smarmy storm sorcerer that shares a body with him, uh, depending on how that goes. So, yeah, <laughs> I I am excited. I am pre-traumatized because my moms are around, <laughs> and I just don't want anything to happen to them. So, um, be nice, Jess, <laughs> but take it away. All right, all right, all right. So, last time in AA, episode 63, Breaking Another Parent. Last session was a whirlwind of revelations and intense encounters. Tamina, the goddess of darkness, mourned her fallen pet, the false Hydra, and disclosed that it originated from her own world, emphasizing that it shouldn't exist in theirs. Things took a mind-bending turn when the party shattered Arev's mother's perception by revealing that Arev was actually Varian. Convinced that he was ill, she decided to take Varian back home, leaving the party uh, slightly stunned. Um, the introduction of Ella to Raybella, aw, the next eldest druid, was far from smooth. Roy, Raybella's far father, nearly set the party ablaze. However, through persuasive efforts, they managed to extract the truth from the truth from Roy, he confessed to assisting the escape of the Terraciel and revealed that Ray Bella's mother was being held hostage by his own mother, manipulating him. Roy hadn't seen Ray Bella's mother in almost five and a half years. He also shared exclusive knowledge that only the eldest druids knew, including the goddess of darkness creating a secluded bubble of their uh, to contain their world by severing off a piece of the universe. In light of these revelations, the party resolved to help Roy and ensure Raybella's safety by leaving her in Ella's care. As night fell, Varian and Ella shared a heartwarming warm moment making s'mores, um, adding a touch of sweetness to the evenings to the evening. Meanwhile, Gilly encountered the enigmatic Profundo Ocean in person, finally meeting the shadow that had accompanied her during her swims. Who? That was an interesting one. Okay. From there. Varian. As you sleep. I. 
a picture begins to take place in your head. Uh, the desert winds created a wall of sand around them, around the small band of travelers. They drew their cloaks and scarves tightly around their faces, hoping to shield themselves from the grit. The elder woman strode ahead, her head held high, eyes seeming to read something in the shifting sands that only she could understand. We must follow the westward path, she called back to them, her voice low and steady, as if she had seen something ancient etched in the sands of time. Her gaze seemed almost supernatural. Perhaps this was druidic sight, seeing something those untrained those untrained in the ways of the ancients could not. Varian tr trudged up the sand dune, peering over his dusty scarf to get a better look at what Anya Arbor was so focused on. He had no idea why they were here, but she insisted it was the correct, correct path to take. He scoffed. Nothing but barren desert and the occasional tuft of a stellabella weed poking out of the sand. He sighed and kept walking, trying to make an, make out any kind of landmark in the distance that he would, that would signal their destination. With a firm yet gentle shove, Varian was pulled up from his daydream. He felt a stinging sensation on his arm and he realized that his sister had given him a good natured punch. With a glance at her, noting her strong but slender flame, her fiery red skin, and her long slender tail that swished in the desert dust. Her voice had the same raspy yet musical quality as always, as the result of hours practicing with her, practicing with her instruments. Don't dray the... Uh, oh, wait, sorry, that's totally not her. Don't... I can't even do it now. Say something, wait. say something. Of course I can. Here, just okay. copy after me for Don't a second. Don't daydream there. too much, Varian. <laughs> uh, she warned with a hint of humor in her voice. You'll find yourself walking into a mirage and I'll have to come and save your tailless wreck of a body. Oh, Varian's I'm... lip curled. <laughs> and, you know, some... well, I lost my head. And sharp teeth were exposed as he spoke. Do you recognize this at all? Because you totally wrote this. Yeah. <laughs> a mocking expression on his face. Only one of us. Oh, sorry. Only one of us gets lost in mirages, Miss Lynn. You, your fantasies can be too much of too much for regular people to stomach. He looked down self-consciously, but the envy evident in his gaze as he admired his sister's long swishy tail, which I do feel is something that he he wanted um uh however what he lacked in features he made up for in magical ability they had both inherited the same crystalline skin of their family line but varian had a knack for the arcane that was unmatched Grinning, grinning, Varian balled up his left hand and then spread his fingers, a tiny fragment of ice glittering like the diamonds as they, spark, they sparked into being. Collecting in the air until a silver wave of frost rippled towards Miss Lynn. She yelped as a cold shock overswept her skin. That's not fair, V, she said indignantly. What do you think he'd say? I don't even know what you're talking about, Mist. You gotta watch your head a little bit there. Varian's gaze followed the frame of Lady Anya to the horizon. His brow crinkled in surprise as she sunk her hands into the sandy dunes and withdrew them with a glittering gush of water. An exhale of disbelief, Varian felt his legs mindlessly steering towards her direction. How did she do that? She paused facing the families that had followed her and pulled her hood and pulled the hood of her cloak down. The fading evening light illuminated her pale skin, which had grown paler with the passing years and swept back over her long two horns that curled around her ears. Her pink skin glowed lilac in the desert glow. Her striking teethling features commanded attention 
even at her age. Here, she spoke boldly, we have long sought only to live in peace and tend to which is ours. And so we shall, here, in the middle of the desert, we grow together here. Varian remembered the desperate, starry night that they had fled the, wa the warring clans of their families and their families in tow. He could picture it as if it was as if it was yesterday. The bright stars twinkled in tiny beacons of hope, like tiny beacons of hope above them. Their sound, the sound of their hurried footsteps crunched against their dewy grass and the thick aroma of pine needles in the air. Even in the midst of uncertainty and danger, Varian was filled with an unshakable trust in his sister, and staying on their journey had brought them to this moment. It was almost like a song, a star song, and now they had a new chance at home. He smiled lightly at the thought. Varian's gaze lingered on the water. The rippling burst out, the rippling, rippling out into the horizon from Anya's toes, like soothing meditation his eyes brightened and when he spotted the tall stout tree basking in the sun near the the lake's edge a symbol of renewal and fresh beginnings he turned to miss lynn and noticed that noticed her gently wiping away dirt that had stuck to her face a tear she was trying to conceal but varian knew better he couldn't help but smile as he saw the slight crease of her lips as she smiled back at him it was it wasn't until it wasn't until he had taken his eyes away from Anya that he noticed that she hadn't looked away from the tree as if it had held the answers to something that she had yearned for. A rev. You feel yourself watching this dream. And you can feel the presence of others with you as they view it. You can almost hear Vara say wake up Stasika. it's time to breathe a new dawn but there's someone else there too something dark is in those dreams with you watching them can you make me a wisdom saving throw dc 16 uh as as which one of me as a rev as a rev okay Wisdom, wisdom saving throw. Oh, uh, yeah, that's 28. With a 28, you feel the cunning's grasp sort of on your soul, your essence, kind of like trying to pull you towards him. Oh, boy. But you can resist that. It's easy. You don't have to go. And I guess you spend the night asleep? I don't have to go, right? You don't have to go. He cannot make you. But it's it's a rev that pulls the feels the pull? Yeah, it's not Varian. It's not Vara. It's a rev that feels that. So a rev has just watched this, this dream or this memory of whatever's going on um he's he he's present and awake for something of variants which which has never really happened and then he feels this this presence and this pull from the cunning mm -hmm. and he's in control of it yeah you could you were able to resist it then a rev chooses to fail as you fail that pull which you can tell was not something he had anticipated you end up in a very gothic dark um sitting room there's a fire blazing in a giant fire uh fire place wow words today um <laughs> there are deep red cushions and couches all around and he is sitting in a chair looking a little perturbed a 
Arev's body feels strangely uncomfortable. He uh he sort of starts rubbing and pulling at his muscles almost like almost like his body's been asleep and he's trying to like reawaken his muscles even even though his body it moves fluidly through the space it the the joints and his muscles ache like the sleep of a thousand years has been it, it is trying to call to his body and he just sort of walks forward but he uh, leans against the wall ignoring the cushions and couches and goes and do I owe that do I owe that to you whatever what? that whatever that vision was of Varian's life that's now, that's never happened before. And it's not me. That's a dream he's having. Though I do wonder how we were able to resist my call. I mean Did I, though? Because you called and you say I resisted. But I'm still here. You came willingly. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so yeah, somehow you call me coming willingly? <laughs> resisting you? That's... That's a. Uh, I don't know what to unpack from that, to be honest. I couldn't pull you from that dream, though I tried. Look. There have been developments he, he leans forward slightly on his and like elbows on his knees oh do tell or uh, still massaging at, at the tired muscles in his body he kicks one of the, the cushions in front of him that's like a take a seat Thank you, but um, I'm. I think I'm better standing right now. Love when they because high. you have done many great things for me already. He looks like what? <laughs> A little shocked there. It passes very quickly. When you think about it, I often I, I owe some of my successes to you. And Varian's as well. In the deeper or darker moments. Times when I've looked for strength or looked for support. Where I thought I'd find it, I didn't, and instead found you. And I, I don't know whether that's an intentional consequence of your involvement with me. I don't know whether that maybe extended beyond your original game, Cunning, But for whatever human heart I have, I'm choosing to say thank you. You're lucky I'm not a fae. 
and give me an, a perception check. Sure. Nineteen. Nineteen. From the doorway, you notice a very familiar gray figure with horns and long silver hair. Um, it is Renanel, kind of arms crossed, leaning against like the door jam, just like I, I told you he was rather sweet. Renanel, and like Arev's body, like sort of creaks up off the wall and he kind of takes a step but then falters he goes ah uh <laughs> just hey don't uh do me a favor just don't move um i he like creakily like pulls his body through the space almost like yeah you know when you wake up and like at first you get up really quickly and then your body is just like oh no shouldn't have done that and then you just sort of like almost feel like you're like puppeting your body <laughs> to do yeah. the rest of it. Okay. So glad I'm not alone on that one. But Arev is is doing that. It feels he feels very disconnected from his body right now. And he sort of lumbers over slowly towards Renanel. And Tofu. <laughs> Every, Every day. day. <laughs> Uh, so Arev finally, like, kind of lumbers through the space, uh, walking around one of the couches, uh, heading over towards the door frame, uh, towards Renanel. And uh, as he gets there, he sort of he's gonna try to, anyways, he's gonna try to like throw his arms up and just embrace Renanel, like, very clumsily and kind of like stumble into him a little bit. Uh, do you want that to be like that's what's actually happening, or is this like a deception of sorts? I mean, it, it's not intended to be a deception, but he's moving very clumsily, uh, so it's not like inherently obvious that that's what he's like heading over to do. You know, like it's more like it, he. If Renanel's kind of like, what is this stupid human doing? Like, <laughs> kind of thing is the intent. As you uh, kind of lurch forward, uh, Renanel actually will step into you and put your, an arm around your waist and sort of, uh, it's, it's like a really quick embrace, really one sided hug, but he kind of uh, turns you and will guide you to a chair that's closer to the cutting. And sit beside you. So, Reb's arms like sort of heavily set into his frame. He goes, "Oh, oh, yeah, okay, uh, sure." And like gets guided over to the chair, and only with Renanel's help does he actually choose to sit down. Mm -hmm. But he slumps into the chair. Uh, do you want to give me an insight check? Yes, I love it. Ask for more rolls. I will roll for I will roll forever. Uh may, no, I won't roll that one. <laughs> no, not good. I got no, I got an eleven, but that's because I rolled a natural two. Eleven's not bad. Uh you do notice, at least with Renadel, that he's he looks a little concerned over this. Like this is not natural, a natural state for you to be in. And he knows you better at least well enough to know that you don't normally like. You're not sluggish like this. You never have been. Um, but you don't catch anything from the cunning. Um, I mean, does does Renanel say anything? Or does he give off any sort of sign that he's worried? Uh, yeah, he he's turned towards you, uh, leaned in slightly, and kind of is just like, his hands are hovering. Like, maybe you you might just pitch forward at any moment. Oh, uh I don't know. I <laughs> look, it's it's fine, Ren. I I I know after <laughs> after our last few meetings it, between talking about you know the 
how I vision the tree of ancient whispers and the, <laughs> that flower we tried to grow together and your home in the plane of, of pain, torment, plane of torment. It's called the rack. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know why I, I feel so clumsy. It, it's weird to have I I share my body, right? You, you know that. Um with a soul of this tiefling named Varian. I think you may have met him, right? We've met. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's he's quite the character. Um This is the first time I think in my life I feel like I I also share my soul with him. Does that make sense? I this this space wherever wherever we are right now. This this isn't my body that's that, that's moving here. This is the other aspect of me. This this dream this mind, this soul aspect whatever you want to call it, whatever part of me that you're actually interacting with and Arav again sort of tenses in his chair and kind of like arcs his spine a little bit and flexes his body and he for the briefest instant uh there's this like cascading glimmer down his arms as as if the constellations and the glow of his starry form is trying to like trying to push through into this space but doesn't like quite emanate and this like soft glow almost comes off his skin before just fading into a bit of stardust off of his arms and he goes when that happens you know that Renanel is, is a little like doesn't like the radiant powers that you have but like you see his hand kind of like jerk away but it comes back and just sort of settles on your shoulder and kind of massages just gently Arev's hand goes up and rests lightly on top of Renanel's and he looks up at his at Ren's young face and he just goes Ren, if it isn't perfectly clear no part of who I am would ever cause you pain there's no need to fear the light that emanates for me it's just an extension of who i am and who i am would never hurt you he nods doesn't like i know there's no verbal component to that just like a mm -hmm. and the cunning shifts forward you're mm. losing yourself. I apparently was asleep for weeks as Varian traveled with my friends. I don't I don't know how much. I don't know how much I've lost. A substantial amount. Your soul is withering. That tiefling has to go. He, no. No, he doesn't. He he doesn't. If you he do want to live, he does. But he he doesn't deserve to die, Cunning. So find him somewhere else to be. Okay. And if there's nowhere else to be, if if I'm it, if I'm, if that's the choice, okay. If if the choice is 
either he stays with me and lives. Or he doesn't. He he de he deserves a second chance. He, there's no way. Like, you see his eyes roll. You've seen what what happened to him, haven't you? Uh, maybe I wasn't always aware of his memories, but you've watched them, haven't you? Or are are you as unfamiliar with Varian as I am? What what are you grasping at, Varov? People die. But he, he was a he was a kid. He was children I, I, die. And it's the greatest tragedy that can be imagined. I it's life. Okay. A mortal life anyway. So then it so then it's the mortal life to die, Cunning. And you're telling me that of all mortal kind, of anyone that could be saddled with this responsibility of hosting a shortened mortal life, that I have been given the chance to give a, a child who was murdered before their time, a, a, a second view of life? And you're saying that I have to let that... Never. I, I would never let that go. I told you to find somewhere else to put him. And I was saying that if that wasn't possible, that I would never let that go. And if it would kill you both... He's had his time. And that goddess you serve, she's not as friendly at, towards you as you think. Maybe not as friendly towards me as I think. Hmm. He um gets up and kind of crouches, moves towards you and crouches in front of you. And uh, reaches into that breast pocket that you have and pulls out the pair of glasses that you know were there, but Varian's been the one taking care of them and puts them on you. And when that happens, you feel stronger. You, you're able to move your body just a little easier. Oh. What? Why? Why what? And he, like, his skin tingles as he, like, raises his hands and he looks, um, his nerves and senses almost vibrating a little bit as he gains a bit more control. And he looks up at his hands and he goes, why does that work? Because you made a deal with me. And I own your soul. And if it slips away, or begins to slip away, put these on. Is that clear? I'm... I think I can do that. If there's a time when it seems like he might be taking control, you put these on. And if you manage to survive, your soul will be returned to you in the end. All right. Well, for the second time during this conversation, I think I am going to say thank you. There's a little like he 
just gently kind of drags his knuckles on your chin and grabs it. He goes, I like when you say that to me. And um, he'll offer you a glass of wine. And you can uh, spend the rest of the night there if you like. I think he will. Um, or uh, settles into the chair and looks over at Renanel and beckons with his hand and pats next to him on the multi-sectioned <laughs> chair uh, of red leather, I'm guessing? Sure. It's leather now. <laughs> As red leather uh, two-seater, three-seater love seat style <laughs> duvet, I don't know, couch. And uh, beckons Renanel and accepts this glass of wine from the cunning and just looks through the cunning's glasses at him as a smile passes across his face. Uh, when you... <laughs> Daniel! What? Uh, what? <laughs> Daniel! <laughs> You're not asking what kind of leather the couch is made of! Stop! Yeah. Um... This is he, he's like feeling the leather. He's like, this feels oddly familiar. I, I feel like I've maybe hugged this before. Don't think too hard on it. Um, I, I wouldn't. And you can <laughs> spend the night there talking with them. You do notice though, when you look at him through his glasses, he's got a bit of a glow to him. Like you can see power coming off of him. Which looks he looks a lot more powerful through his own glasses than you would have thought him to be uh wow um i think a rev would like to if i may i'd like to sort of end the scene i'm reading the chat go ahead continue <laughs> yes um a rev would like to end the scene uh, unless you'd like to to, to answer the question but i think as he beckons to the cunning uh beckons to renanel to sit beside him and looks over at the cunning and smiles <laughs> wearing the cunning's glasses i he would look over and say i think it's about time you finally tell me what you want from me and, like, I don't actually want you to answer that question. I want that to be. I'm pretty sure he's told you what he wants. But if you're trying to, like, bring it up in front of, uh, in front of um, Rananel, he'll change the subject. And that's kind of the thing. It's yeah. like just like a. But it's, like, not exactly also what he wants from me, maybe pertaining to the quest. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. We don't answer that. We let it we let it simmer. Exactly. Uh, um, and then yeah, you you roll to see who wakes up in your bed. I will do that. Now you can do with advantage if you want to try for a rev, um, because you you did have his glasses on. Oh. Yeah, you know what? Um, let's roll with advantage for a, for a rev because like that that kind of makes sense canonically with like having just interacted with the cunning and having his soul sort of bolstered. It feels like it it would be a, a chance for him to sort of wake up in his own body. So, uh, hi was a rev. Okay, hi is a rev. But, but like above ten is. Has always yeah. sort of been a red for me. Well, I I rolled a nat seventeen on the first roll, so so you're gonna wake up as a rev. Uh, before you do, mm -hmm. we will head around to uh, Gilly. What are you doing this morning? <laughs> um. Okay, so something that I remembered the other day is that I need to be reloading my chocolate box, which is a very important thing to me. <laughs> so I gotta do that in the morning. <laughs> That's the first you thing I'm gonna do. Chocolate box. <laughs> it's very important. Mm -hmm. It's just a little piece of home. 
decadent caramels check. and chocolates and candies. Okay. D three plus one. Can you give me a D six? Something is going to appear. Okay. I've got three chocolates in there. Great. So that's so, just, that, that's just something that I have. Plus one? Or just... Yeah, I rolled a four. Together. So two plus one. Um, uh-huh. And then... And then I'm going to take my little morning dip. A little morning constitutional. They haven't been able to do it since they left home. Habitually. So I think... She's going to start up the habit again and just take a little swim. Are you looking for anyone or calling to anyone as you swim? I don't think so. I think Gilly feels a little bit bad that she's got this one very powerful being that's just in charge of her babysitting her. And (laughs) so I think she doesn't want to be much more of a bother than she needs to be. So she's just going to take a little do a little lap around this barren wasteland of an ocean. And... As you do swim, you have these like orange little tentacles that kind of sucker onto your shoulder and your glowing little uh, octopi Not appears bad. to swim well, with hey you. Who gets a little like, like you get little deep. like sucker kisses all over. <laughs> <laughs> lovely and then she's gonna go find breakfast awesome uh when you get out into the kitchen phase is already there this is like her favorite time in the morning um and she has prepared breakfast for you uh Aiza, what's cooking good morning i made i made eggs and sausages today ah you're my favorite <laughs> thank you Second. and she'll she'll bring it over to you uh <laughs> your hair's oh yeah right you have water in there that's yeah. kind of cool this place is kind of cool but don't tell Bella if I said that because she kind of sucks <laughs> yeah I'm not a huge fan either but I do like this place and if you ever want to use the beach you are welcome in my grotto I, I think I'll take you up on that yeah it's kind of it's fun yeah She's she looked like she's genuinely just happy to have another friend. <laughs> ah. Same. You guys have a really cute moment eating <laughs> breakfast together that is eventually ruined by Talon, who plops down on a plate in front of you guys and demands that you both drink tea so that he gets his he gets his worship. <laughs> but uh Daniel, is there anything that Damascus is doing? Um, Damascus will probably sleep in a little bit as Faiza sneaks away to go make breakfast. Um, He's definitely the sleep-in type of person. I don't think he's doing anything terribly special this morning. Um, He'll get out uh, of their little the little room that he's been sh- he shared the previous night with Faza. Uh, can you before the- you do that? Can you roll me a perception check? I love rolling dice. I can. Six. Uh that is a thirteen. Thirteen. With a thirteen, you don't notice it right away, but just before something impacts with you, you hear tiny little foot feet footprints or footsteps go and then bam a little body just kind of ta- tackles you wow is it right morning. yeah oh. morning darling didn't expect to see you coming how you I'm doing great. and i said that i was gonna get everyone for breakfast from 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 i told Faza. you told me all right is she cooking up a storm in there did you have a good night in, in that room last night with you and your pops? How's he doing, yeah. by the way? He seemed all agitated last night. He snored lots. Good. That means he got a good night's rest. Yeah. I still sleep. So I gotta wake him up now, but I came for you first. You have to That's... get you have to get Varian because I don't like him. He's not my knight. I'll go and I'll I'll poke at Varian before you get him awake, don't worry. You've been okay. practicing with the hat I gave you? 
yeah see and she put she pulls it out of nowhere just kind of puts it on and this time she is a purple elf child with bright pink with a bright pink dress that is quite the look eventually you're gonna have to work on something a little bit less uh, hurts me to say it but a little bit less flashy but while we're in here you experiment as much as you want you look however makes you happy darling and then she sort of ends up getting like orange hair on top of that. Purple and orange. Those are good colors to go together. I tussle her hair a little bit. Okay. I'll go get my daddy. Go get your pops. I'll go get him. I'll go get whoever's in Varian's room. <laughs> uh, I'll go knock on uh, a rev slash Varian's door. What do? I snore <laughs> very loudly. Ella wakes up. She's actually never mind. She's actually up. She's been like fixing her uh, her gear and petting her tiger as she goes over and answers the door. Oh yes, but. Uh... Just wanted to let you and a Brev, Varian, whoever he is this morning, just wanted to let you know that breakfast is served if you want to get it nice and warm. This comes with breakfast as well. I mean, and it she comes with, it looks comes over with at Phaser, Sasha. and Phaser comes with breakfast. <laughs> she looks approving at that. <laughs> like, <clears throat> very good. Uh, but she'll she'll kind of snap her fingers at Sasha and Sasha runs over to a Rev or Varian and there is just this wet, sticky tongue that goes across your face as Tiger wakes you up, a Rev. No. <laughs> Why? Oh, again? Oh, there's, there's a purr. And then, like, your hair gets taken into its mouth because it just gives you another lick. Uh, everybody used to ask me how my hair always stood up in school, and Sasha, I swear to you, they never believed it was when I told them I got licked by a tiger every morning. And at the sound of your voice, a, a, a dodger appears out of nowhere and just kind of drops into your lap. No. Oh. Hey, boy. And I, like, ruffle his, like, half-spectral head and just kind of, like, really give him a good noogie. He fully solidifies and rubs his face all over you. Just like, you know when they just, like, it's just back and forth and there's just hair everywhere. <laughs> God, but they say it's raining cats and dogs. I swear that's not what they meant. All right. Hey, Mom. Do you remember who you are? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, last time I checked, I, I still remembered who I was. You have so much explaining to do <laughs> right now. I'm going to let you guys get to it. Uh, there's food if you want. No, 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 around, no, but, no. Uh, yeah. no. Damascus, you stay put. I don't. I hear night. I hear my night. Stay. Uh, you hear little feet. <laughs> you hear little feet coming. Rebel, come on in. We got a surprise for you. It was my night. She oh. comes running over. I, if she like comes running up towards him to hug him, I imagine he'd like catch her. And he goes like, yeah, hundred percent. Hey, We've gone and Varian was here, and we don't like Varian. He hurts the trees. He does hurt the trees, doesn't he? Oh, it's it's good to see you again, princess. Come, I require food, and you are my knight. You have to get it to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, he turns to Ella. Mom, I, I promise I will fill you in. But right you are now, her there's a little girl that needs to eat. I'm... Apparently, you have pledged your service. You must feed the princess. I... 
I think I was voluntold. <laughs> but is it not true? You told me that you will be my knight, so you're my knight. I uh, do seem yes, to recall you saying that. You liar. <laughs> I look back and forth between all of them and go, who's hungry? All right, let's go get you food. <laughs> You guys go and have your breakfast together. <laughs> Is yeah. there anything that anyone wants to do uh, before you guys head out today? Um, nothing else really jumps out at me. I kind of go through some of the um, odd things that we collected from the false hydras layer and just... Mm -hmm. A lot of it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but like, I've got a bottle with a weird symbol on it that I'll just kind of lay out and be like, I have no idea what this thing does. Anybody any ideas? Yeah, I'll also pull my stuff and we can, we can pour over it if we want. I got like a bag of holding. Do we want me to be the one that's in charge of the bag of holding? Or do we have any uh, specific preferences about that? Oh, hey, that's a really cool thing. Yeah, uh, if you want to grab the stuff for us, that's fantastic. I, I mean, really you guys we... all have bags of holding. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, now I have my very own. You have no, a special I... bag of holding. Uh, that was Edgar's. So it does turn into a forge. If you turn it inside out, like I'm like have a to learn how to that. forge things, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> it's just what it was. Might as well. Yeah, what's the bottle thing there, Damascus? Yeah, I ain't got the slightest idea. There's a symbol on it that I ain't sure I recognize. Can I like roll to see if I know what the symbol might be like? Uh, applicable to like what it has to do with at least maybe Damascus sure uh do like you want to give me some sort of uh let's go with i guess an intelligence check okay can i do arcana because then i can add an extra plus two yeah you can do arcana yeah that makes sense it's a magical like i'll it, i believe it was an all an, an unsolvable Weird. alchemical formula yeah. if we're th talking about the bottle of the water bear Ooh. Uh, 16 plus 3 is 19. Um, looking at it, you can tell, you can tell that you're way out of your league with this for sure. Um, but you can also tell that's in a script that you've, you're not sure is from Iowan. Okay. I share that with the group. Whatever this is written in, it ain't local. It ain't a script from Iowan. Oh, jeez. Is this going to be another oh. one of those freaky memory erasing things? It might be. We had I've a friend got named a... Edgar, and he had a mask that when he put it on, or when he had a mask that when he had, just that he had it, he kept forgetting parts of his life. So that's possible. If this all came from, if it has to do with the memory racing thing, that means it all came from wherever Tamina came from. It, I don't uh, love stuff that came from where she came from. Me either, but I don't exactly want to chuck it on the side of the road for anyone to find. Maskus, Gilly. This is kind of a weird thought based off of what you just said, but... Tamina, Tamina created inside of that other space, right? She created, she could like a like a whole world in wherever she was banished to, right? What she said, right? No, I can't say I'm familiar with how plain stuff works, but. The barest bones of creation to me like if if you're gonna build something in a different space you know like with, with different rules of what what can be built 
then maybe it's entirely possible that what Tamina built out of is like the opposite of memory. Anti memory. Well, like think think of it, think of it like light and shadow, right? Uh light is cast down from the sun. And when it hits an object, then a shadow is created, right? The, the darkness is a reflection of an object that is hit by the light. So, it's, so it's absence. It it's exactly it's it it's this negative space. But it's also not um like if, if it weren't for the thing in the way then that space wouldn't have been created and it's not like we can see what's behind like i'm like a tree say say a tree right like we can't necessarily see what's behind a tree even if it's fully il illuminated even if we're standing in the light of beloth if this plane is between us and where tamina was banished to right this this tree this plane is in the way and tamina built in the shadow then it it's kind of it's kind of un unknowable isn't it like it, it's you can't have a memory of something that you have never seen or experienced and if we keep if she, she if she built in that space the whole a whole world like a whole universe in, in that space of what's beyond us then when stuff comes from that over here is 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 it any wonder why we have difficulty you know remembering it or or, or interacting with it or like like the false hydra itself is such a good clue we unless we were physically looking at it you know it Unless the light of Beloth allowed us to actually witness this thing from her space, we we didn't know it was there. It was so alien to us that it just didn't register. So, how and much she is called the unknowable, the unknown. So, so, so how much of her world have we already interacted with that we don't even have the capacity to? remember because it's so foreign that our our minds just thought of it as normal Roy well, looks just... horrified by the way what Roy looks horrified by the way <laughs> first oh. of all good morning Erev <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again uh, good morning I've had a lot. I've had a lot <laughs> of downtime. Again. Uh, oh, hey, Roy. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> that, I almost forgot that y'all were there. Um, can coffee, I make a suggestion? Right? <laughs> that I don't talk until I drink coffee? Okay. Gilly will pour you a cup of coffee. Wasn't uh, what I was going to say, but that's actually a good idea. This is all I can contribute to this conversation, I think. I'm wondering if maybe we step outside for a moment, just the the five of us, and um, see if we can't ask the creator of this thing what it does. Something tells me it's important. Wait, hang on. <laughs> What, what, what? And this is Ella. I'm sorry, you just said that you that you think that this came from a place that that this Tamina made and then you are going to call her outside? She's been remarkably... With my son, <laughs> who is sick, who has been thinking that he is someone else. No, I have been someone else. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> quite consistent about it she might have 
what we need to help a rev get better. Then she will do it in here. Well, where I will watch her. Uh, what? I don't, I don't see this time out. <laughs> you have been lying to me for months. You never call your mothers. You. <laughs> Pick up the sending stone once uh, in a while. Let's, uh, right. So James, you have to, we need to take a break, right? Yes. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a quick five minute break and we will see you in five minutes. I don't know. Okay. Bye. See you soon. Great. We'll be right back. Be right back. Hi, everybody. We are back from our break. Um, You guys were in the middle of deciding whether or not you were going to call Tamina and a rev was getting uh, lectured by his mother. What would you like to do? I think. It's probably a not terrible idea to try and figure out what this thing is, where it came from, what it does. And um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm terrible at research and I would not mind asking Tamina to, to do our homework for us. That oh, yes, yeah, same. Feels familiar. Big same. I think our if was maybe onto something, though. That was a lot of fancy words. Uh, but the vibe seems quite legit to me. Um, I glance over at Raybella. Do we want maybe the... I made a heart in my eyes and I put ketchup in it. (laughs) Made a heart? You put ketchup in what? It's beautiful. I made a heart in my eggs and I put ketchup in it so that it would be red. You are very sweet, princess. Thank you. I don't think she's going to notice. She's an artist in every medium. <laughs> right, let's just call it down then. Uh, Wait, who? We're, we're calling Tamina right now? That's what I think. That, she made uh, the thing. Seems like our best bet. Made, made the bottle? The bottle. That's our best guess because it's got the it's stuff that's not bottle, from no. here. Um. Well, so I know I went off on a tangent before, and I apologize because obviously that I hadn't had my coffee. He takes another sip. You should be drinking tea. Um, uh, Talon says you should be drinking tea. I mean, what what is coffee but just extremely steeped tea, bean tea? I don't accept that answer. Tell him I don't accept that answer. He says you're right. Oh, perfect. See, I knew we'd agree eventually, Talon. Um, he kicks the salt off the table. Hey, worse than a cat. The bid luck. I. Do you mind if I see that bottle for a second? Sure. Don't see why not. I hand you the bottle. Ms. DM. See? Can I take can I take my uh collapsible telescope out? Ooh, okay. Um I so Gilly, this would be probably the first time I think that you've seen a rev interact with this object. But so he he pulls sort of up from his hip this little brass um work it, it kind of looks like like a pocket watch almost but you find as he like works it it collapses and comes out and forms this intricate uh like brass and almost clockwork um handheld uh, telescope like a like Ooh. a single eyepiece and uh would might be appealing to Gilea as she's a sailor right like this would be this would look very like common to her maybe not like the collapsible part but like the object itself although a spyglass yes a a very fancy spyglass and i want to compare the craftsmanship of my spyglass with the bottle and i want to see if there's any um 
indication that th this relic that I I've had since my birth uh, that allows me to see. Oh, so this is the fun fact about a gilly. Uh, if I look through my telescope at the sky, regardless of whether I'm in an enclosure or buried in the earth or uh, wherever I am, I can always see the night sky with uh, a bit of a, a cliffhanger there um, that it's not just the night sky as is because in Iwin, uh, there are no stars because for the longest time, it has been nothing but twilight. A night doesn't actually exist. It's either like day or twilight. And uh, through my telescope, I see a night sky full of stars. And it's and been... Gilly can say, oh, like in your room. Because like I did see your room. room. Yes. Yeah. And so this anyways, and like I just want to compare the two of them. This this like relic of of magic that I have that allows me to like see the, the, the night sky like the past and this bottle and see if there's any similarity or connection between the two maybe i can try and help decipher this without you know summoning a god of darkness uh but I, I just want to ex exhaust options before we do that you know tell me how you are investigating this what are you doing so a rev uh sets down his coffee and he takes his telescope and he takes the the bottle and he sets them both down on the kitchen counter and he he runs his hands back and forth between them, feeling for indentations and marks and things that might stick out like triggers or switches or um, because his telescope, you know, like looks like a pocket watch, but like can like collapse or, or retract into the into the shape. Right. And so he's like feeling for pressures and triggers. He's like examining the glass. Um, he even like briefly takes the the spyglass and looks through it and attempts to like see the the bottle um just interacting with it as much as as possible okay uh roll me two things investigation and arcana okay uh and so investigation Oh, uh, and that's 16 plus <laughs> zero, because I'm not smart. So 16 for investigation. And then Arcana is also plus zero. Fuck, these are things I'm terrible at. Why do I do this? The shot. <laughs> uh, six for Arcana. So 16 for investigation and six for Arcana. I mean, nothing really stands out to you magical wise about these like you know that they're magic items but they just they feel the, the same to you um investigation wise i'm going to say you've at just as you're like looking through it um at the bottle looking through your your spyglass at the bottle you twist the like the spyglass the cap of it almost like um it's the lens a little bit and it sort of seems to turn a little for the first time oh so like I, i'm holding this and i like I, I play with it and i examine and i twist and it like gives just a little bit yeah oh i Huh? I I pull the spyglass back and I, I I fiddle with it a little bit. Uh, interesting. But that's deducing something about the spyglass. Did I deduce anything about the bottle? Um, not with out the Arcana check. Okay. What's interesting? Did you figure something out? Um. No, I'm a little worried that my telescope might be close to breaking, though. it uh, It's always been very rigid, and now it kind of does this. And he just, like, demonstrates, like, click, 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 click back it's and It's like forth. that metal sound of, like, just, just like, metal on metal turning. That's 
that ain't a good sound. Uh, anyone mm-hmm. know where how to mend stuff? I don't think that's a thing I can do. Yeah. Maybe when we get into town, we can get somebody to look at it and magically repair it. I do apparently have a forge. But... <laughs> do you know anything about forging? <laughs> nope. It must be a really good forge. Cold metal or something. Well, we can always if we ever find a blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> How hard can it be? I'm sure we could figure it out. <laughs> Put our brains together. And yeah, all of our muscle. very smart brains. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with my intelligence of 10, I'm as smart <laughs> as a commoner. So, uh, what do you do? Any Anything about the bottle, though? Uh... No, I I was really hoping that something would stand out to me, but um, hey, Winter. Yep. Can you do me a favor? I ah, oh God, you know the the back of my head's kind of hurting, but for can you can you just p- pick up this bottle for me? I mean, I know I'm standing right in front of it and all, but like, just just do me a favor and hold it. Okay. He kind of reaches across the table and picks up the bottle. Now what? Does anything happen? Does your head feel better? <laughs> uh, no, he's holding a bottle. Okay, because um, obviously, like, Areb's memory is still a little short-circuited because of the false hydra and things being robbed from him, but um, th- there's like a weird memory, and I don't remember which item it was that Winter picked up that like he interacted with because he's there was like there was an item we had. I just couldn't remember whether it was this one that that reacted when he picked it up. It was the it was his hammer. It was the hammer, not yeah, the bottle. Yeah, when you when you guys were just. Dis- figuring out that he was the new god of winter it was the hammer oh i thought it was, i thought it was the bottle that like gave off steam okay all right okay fair do you need all of us to touch it would that help i mean yeah actually i mean like why don't we just do kind of like a round robin of picking this thing up and seeing if anybody it phase maybe you you next study it <laughs> see it's if anything like, happens if it makes you happy She'll put her hand out and be like, give it to me. It's like, Winter's like, no, I mean, you could ask nicely for it. <laughs> give me the bottle, Winter, or I'll make you give me the bottle. <laughs> it's just how siblings behave, in my experience. We're not siblings! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. And he gives her the bottle. <laughs> Nothing. Gilly, you're up, I suppose. I will take the bottle and kind of flick it and turn it over. Uh, Do you want to give me an investigation roll? Absolutely. Why not? Flick it. Flick it so good. Lick the bottle. That's all. That's all. Chat wants is someone Mm -hmm. to lick the bottle. Lick it. (laughs) Lick it and lick it. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god. Oh, little gremlins cannot be watching this show. No. Gilly was um, Thank god we have this thrown off here. by the innuendo and rolled a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now what? Alright, that didn't seem to help in any way. Can I have it? I vote, I vote we go with plan A. Well, I mean, hey, hey, hold on. Princess wants to hold the bottle. It might be dangerous. I think maybe it's not for princesses. But it hasn't done anything to us, so odds are it'll do nothing to her. And if it does... I don't don't think I want to take that chance. Just in case. Roy? Shut up. Do you want to hold the bottle? I don't want to hold the bottle. (laughs) Okay. But Ravella does, and she's surrounded. I don't care what she wants. I want her to eat her eggs. (laughs) 
So, Ravella, what I'm hearing is dad says if you eat your eggs, you can hold the bottle. Okay, I'll eat my eggs. <laughs> yeah. What? Probably. <laughs> all right. All right. Our Rev's trying to be the cool uncle already. I am the cool uncle. <laughs> when they said that if I eat my eggs, I could hold the bottle. You'll break the bottle. I won't break the bottle. I'm real careful. Eats the eggs. <laughs> uh, while she's distracted eating the eggs, and if she's going to be holding it, I definitely want to know what in the hell the thing does. I'm, I'm just doing it. Um, I would like to try and call it to Tamina. What do you do? Um, I will use. Uh, I can do silent image at will, so I'll have like a big silent image version of the symbol, the the, the symbol of the unknown, mm -hmm. uh, just appear kind of like floating a little bit above the uh, kitchen table, okay, and just call out, uh, Tamina, the darkness. We could use a little bit of assistance and help if you don't mind popping in it would be very kind of you i rolled okay uh you hear that <laughs> it's so formal as the shape that you have made that says the dark the darkness in her script begins to move and take form a mouth and eyes that kind of glow. If there's a preferred oh, form of title. address, if, I certainly didn't want to cause disrespect, but if there's a preferred form of address, it's I'd be happy to use it. When? Since I'm about to ask you for a favor. <laughs> uh, we uh, got this thing in the horde of that lovely creature with the many heads of forgetting. And something about it strikes me as immensely familiar. And I'm pretty sure that this rune, it ain't one of us. So you show her the bottle? Yes. There's a pause as the rune begins to, like, look down at you. And then it vanishes. On the bottle? No, the one that you made over the okay. table. <clears throat> and she leans over your shoulder as Tamina appears and goes, Where did you get wow. that? Yeah, we need to put a bell on you or something. <laughs> it, it was, as far as I know, amongst the collection of goodies that that false Hadra, which how do I even know that thing's name? Regardless. I it, told it to you. Right. Right. It was in a collection of goodies that it, it had gotten, I assume, from its victims. Or maybe for it. brought with it. Give it, it to her. Seems important. Can I do like an insight check on her if she's going to just shiki fit and run? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> My insight's pretty good. It's not like she's a god or anything. Okay, 22. Uh, let me roll something. Uh, you have caused chaos, so uh, God damn it! Crack the Fine. D eight from that. Thanks, Talarius. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> We're gonna find out what this is. <laughs> she looks amused. That, that's, uh, okay. She looks amused. If she wanted to take it from you, she could. That's true. There's a child here. I give her the thing. You said I could hold the bottle. You're next. She asked and first. It's only fair. As she takes the bottle, her eyes kind of go up to Ray Bella for a second. And she goes, Well, look at that. 
And she places the bottle down on the table and begins to glide over to Ray Bella. And her father immediately like rises. I I will try and interpose myself between them. What do you do? I literally will try and just stand in the way. Uh, all right. What's your interest in you put the a, child? You put a hand on her shoulder. I try. <laughs> She's not like, being... Yeah, she'll... she stops. Are you brave today? She's a child. She is. She needs to be protected. She's a special child. The but next is. eldest druid. Or maybe not quite. There's not normally two of you. Never more than one born per cycle. Only half this one is. She's only half. She shrugs. Hmm. File that one away. Okay, you have no collar. <laughs> That's rude. Just be happy she don't spray you with ketchup to try and add some. I shouldn't have said that. I could paint you really nice. I have a hat. If you put it on, you could be any color you want to be. And uh, with that, you'll see that Tamina will uh, change. And uh, a bit of blue begins to blossom from her ch- from her heart. And it becomes this teal. And she becomes all different colors. And you hear Ooh. Ray Bella laugh for a moment before it goes away. That's an interesting change. No, Tabina. Oh, you're back. <laughs> I guess you've been dealing with my alter ego for a long time, haven't you? It's a big mouth, that one. Yeah, I can learn a, two, a thing or two from him, I think. Don't start. Have you... Have you heard from your brother? Not yet. Do you expect that to change? Probably, yes. When he says he's going to do something, he does. If it doesn't work out, he'll just undo it. A rev looks over at Damascus and like gives him like a really long look. Then turns back to Tamina and goes, he can just undo time. Well, yes, he made it. He is time. Damascus? Yeah, Rev. How do we succeed when we rely on time? And our enemy, who wants us dead, can simply just undo it. You see uh, Tamina kind of just sit back on nothing and look interested in this conversation. We figure out a way to trap him in our time stream. (laughs) Oh, no. Hey, Tamina. I'm still here. Where's the closest portal to your world? Why? 
I, you know, I've just been really curious. I mean, you can ask Gilly there, although I'm sure you were listening. I, I had a real, uh, real thought about your world recently mm. uh, and how, how much you built there. And, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of a, thinking how much I'd like to ad admire all of the structure. So, uh, yeah, where's, where's the nearest portal so that we could, you know, possibly check that out? You haven't learned from the first time. Yes, let's collapse everything quicker. Co collapse what? No, oh, you haven't been here. Right. Well, there are portals all over. I keep closing them. Because when they stay open, things like my Hydra appear. Yes. But I, I don't necessarily want one to stay open open i want one for us to be able to go through fetch him up she looks to damascus and she We've goes been back there. to the bottle and us going there and coming back is the reason that they've been opening up like crazy are Wait, you we... suggesting we put the brother through a portal hmm do you think he's coming himself? I was he just... He rarely leaves his library. Can he undo things from there? Or does he have to be in the place where that time was flowing? Maybe. I don't know. Well, he usually likes to let it play. If he does come to try and undo things, then whoever might be on the same page with you, if he don't remember that this is something he wants to do, <laughs> then he'll never go back and undo it. Uh, oh, you are clever. Hey, DM. Mm -hmm. A rev. Is a rev still wearing glasses? You are. Shit. Gold rimmed <laughs> glasses. Uh. Hey DM. Mm -hmm. Does a rev remember from his dreams and conversations with Ren and Ellen the Cunning that their plane is removed from time? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> It is. Oh shit! Uh, you would, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Fuck! I did not see this one coming. So, <laughs> uh, a rev, um, runs his hands gently along the frame of these glasses and he you see a shimmer in your peripheral vi vision and as he does so he mouths silently the words when he comes for us you bring us all there are you talking to uh the cunning? You're talking to the cunning. Oh, do you want to bring what just you guys or you want to bring everything? You, you'll I, you'll you'll you won't hear an answer but you'll know what he's asking. I, do we want to bring us or do we want to bring him? And yeah, not I us. Bring the librarian. That might be somewhere we can beat him. That's my thought. Yeah. We we can't... Okay. So, I look at Damascus through the, through the glasses, and, like, the intensity of a Rev's stare, like, w would almost feel warm, Damascus. Like, you feel... You got laser you feel, vision going. You, you feel the heat of the summer itself start to wash over you. 
and like the 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 smell of like a warm summer's day and like the heat of it and uh this bright blue sky hits your mind as for the first time arev sinks into vara's influence and he looks directly at you trying to force into your mind the thought because he's not telekinetic but he's trying to get across to you I know where we can live. Oh. Him? Oh. Um, just quickly roll an insight check because you're not telekinetic. Hee <laughs> hee. Roll the four. That's a 14. Do I pick up what he's putting down with the 14? Oh, the four. I mean, you. T- uh, I mean, that's a. Maybe not live, but you got like the same wavelength of like something to do I, with the with Narak and like the demon dimension and all an of idea. that stuff. I know you have an inkling. Something you do know that Faza is actually a mind reader. Mm-hmm. I also have message. You do, but um. when you let Vara take control like that for the first time, everything. Everything is on fire. Every vein that you have begins to burn. And it's not pleasant. You thought that maybe like actually becoming one with your god there. That would that would be calming. But this is this is fire. This is the heat of a star almost. It's a lot. And at that moment where you're like this is not good. Tamina takes your chin. And goes, I have not seen you in a while. And it sinks back into you as Vara leaves. She didn't show up for you. Ouch. Trust me, Tamina. What little Vara has been present for, you two will talk. Today is not that day. Might I remind you, you pledged yourself to me. I said I would aid you. Hmm. And I don't intend to break that promise. So many promises. I wonder which one you will break. And then she spins that bottle in her hands. And gives it back to you, Damascus. You so have what is it? <laughs> the ability to give a deity back its godhood in your hands. To create a deity if you want it. Is Too bad you can't read to drink it. it. There's nothing in it. Oh. It's a formula. <laughs> what language is this in? Mine. Fair enough. That's all. Can you translate it for us? I could. But? You haven't asked nicely enough. I was very deferential when I called you here. I would very much appreciate it if you could assist us in the reconstruction of such an ancient and 
powerful piece of magic. One that I am sure will come in very handy in defending this creation of yours when your brother sends whoever he sent him to tear it all down and make <laughs> you put away your toys. Give me an insight. Give me an insight check on yourself. Sure. I am full of shit. I got a nat 20. Nat 20. Ooh. Yeah, you started you started <laughs> When you started originally, Balm was like, okay, you got this. You could feel it in your heart. Okay, you got this. Okay, you fucked this up. You screwed this up real bad. Okay, we have gone the wrong way. <laughs> um, well, persuasion check too. <laughs> she goes, what will you give me? Because she taps your chest and you may roll a persuasion check. Persuasion checks. Um, 12, so that's a 25. <laughs> what will you give me? This is a boon, a very, very good boon. What could I possibly have to offer someone as magnanimous and powerful as you? Exactly. Do you want to roll me an insight check? Always. Can I roll it with advantage because I got a nat 20 last time? Yes, you can roll it with advantage because you got the nat 20 last time. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, 29. 29. Okay. Um, that was not created. That was created for a specific person as a backup. As like a an oh shit. So we can't use it or no, nope. you can use it, but it was not her intention when she made it. It was not her intention when she made the bottle for us to find it or use no, it? No, for anyone. You can tell, like, with that, with a 29, you can tell that that was not, like, there's a moment there where she's like, this was not supposed to happen. Uh, she doesn't made... want us to have it. Yeah, this was a backup, but she's not, if she wanted to take it from you, she could, but she's. Playing it's long not game. a bad thing for you to have it. She's playing the long game here, folks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's I'll... not taking it from us because there's still something in it at the end that we might do that she likes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'll say this then. In light of a gift or boon that would be an insult to even bother asking, I'll offer you a promise. <laughs> you feel you. bomb, like, just fucking think oh. about this. Just think about this, bro. <laughs> A promise to use it when necessary and not out of mortal sentiment or desire. To use it only when it's for the good of Iowan as a whole. She boops your nose. Do you have something to write this down with? I start scratching. Right, Bella gives you crayons. a crayon and like a piece <laughs> I of absolutely parchment. absolutely write it in crayon. Oh, fabulous. Um, and here's what you get. A single ray plucked from the sun's embrace, a drop of sun. A piece of ancient skin from the first being of Rhea, freely given. The crimson elixir that kindles mortal flame. A celestial flower that blooms afar, a beautiful star. A serpent's eye, fiery and bright, with power to petrify on sight, and 
a drop of divine sorrow, a shimmering reminder of the heart's depth. Also, it says it must be brewed at 1am in full darkness under the sky of stars and placed in a and in a holy site. Must be imbibed by the next dawn. Just because I thought it would be fun. Nice. She's giving us a scavenger hunt. <laughs> and you this will, is so exciting. You will make with that an elixir of d divine resurgence. A question. Oh, about oh. the gift you've given us. Go on. As to its purpose and effect, it can, as you said, give a deity back its godhood or create a deity. Can it strengthen one? Make yes. one powerful enough to, well, maybe be on your level? As it occurs to me that, well, things between you and Belloth ain't been grand for a while, but I imagine if you were both on equal an equal playing field, maybe that might change things. What a clever boy you are. I try. It's an option, at least, but only if it's for the good of Iowa, like I promised. She is Ireland. I know. Exactly my thoughts. On the cheek. Is that all? Look at the others. Do we know who your brother might be sending to do his dirty work? The eye roll. Is almost painful. We've been through this, haven't we? Maybe my memory is just still a little messed up from that mm -hmm. creature. And I'm new. And she's new. You are new, aren't you? And she will walk back over to you, uh, uh Jilly. Jilly. And there's, she's like, she circles you, runs like a finger across your back and stops and just kind of stares at you. Yeah. How interesting creature you are. Thank you. People keep telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe it's time to figure out why. Any hints? Well, I assume my daughter has something to do with it. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> or perhaps her daughter. Oh, uh, the what? The one that? The one I met yesterday? No, I don't know who you met yesterday. Maybe. Okay. Uh, she'll turn back to you, Damascus, and, um, what was his name? Shit, now I gotta, like, go through our, like, list of these gods. Um, uh, so you, you know that they have, um, that she has told you, and it was Alvar, Alvar. and, and Aramena. Aramena. Because yeah. where Alvar goes... Aramena will always follow. And you've been told this, that she he made her from something not unlike Beloth. Those are coming for us specifically? 
those are being those are who he would most likely send um and i believe he, she told you the first time around that it's because you know alvar was one of her favorites the best to reason with her does that mean you could tell him not to kill us by any chance I could but if we fight you'll die anyway got it great <laughs> best to leave you out of it then and try and shoo him away as best we can Do tell me when you find your other half. She looks at Raybella. And then sort of turns and walks into nothing. And is gone. God, she's creepy. You ain't wrong about that. But that actually could have gone a lot worse. I ate my eggs. <laughs> uh, so we let her have a turn with the bottle then I will use mage hand to hand her the bottle and then have the mage hand like hovering right underneath the catch in case <laughs> she drops it she almost drops it <laughs> Careful it's just a bottle just a very big bottle in her hands now because she's so small I'll be right back uh, what do you do I will. At least we have a plan. Some of this stuff, I don't know exactly what it means. A ray of sun, a piece of ancient skin from the first beat. Well, I mean, that's yeah. clearly bark of some port sort, right? Piece of skin oh, taken clever. from the first being. I was going to say, one of them was blood, I think. There's a crimson... That gives people life sounds very funny. I have something. Yeah. I, what have you got, Darlin? I have, and this is Faza. And she gets up and she walks away and runs into her room for a second, and she comes back with a necklace that you bought her in Draxted, and it's the life's blood elixir. It's oh, hey. garnets that look like they're made of. Of some sort of red elixir swirling. Nope. I, I have mean, something. That might help. Well, it works out. Well, you were curious. originally, I believe, intended to see if you could create a body or something mm -hmm. for her. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we're going to use it to make a new body. That's helpful. All right, we'll use that. I'll get you a new necklace when we get to Rhea. I'm sure they got something pretty. Okay. But she's already wearing the necklace that you got her, the one that's the silver. Yeah, she's she's quite happy. She, like, never wears that because it is the most expensive thing that she's ever seen in her entire life. Mm -hmm. um, All right, that's two. Celestial flower that blooms. God, what did she say? And so you have to find the first tree then that's roy that's was it the one that uh for. was that darian's tree he had a special tree right yeah he called it the tree of ancient whispers or something yeah that's what they called it at home for sure sounds like the sort of thing the... you might use for a spell well so we're planning on there's, by anyway. What was what was that part of that riddle she said? Something about a piece of the first a piece of ancient the, skin from the first being of Rhea. I think it's bark. And we'll Varian. <sighs> okay, this is gonna sound absolutely insane. Uh, but I've been having dreams 
recently. I, I mean, like, like, like I dream, like everybody dreams. It's, it's a normal thing, right? I dream but... of flowers. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes, the flowers are beautiful. <laughs> but recently. Wait, sorry. Special what flowers? Kind of flowers? Gold ones. Gold ones. Go gold ones. Awfully celestial, does it not? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, I am going to use my my silent image to make an image of oh I can't remember what it's called the flower that Phaelus plucked way back in like before we even got to to Frosh. Stella Bella? Stella Bella. No. Nope. Not what that's called? Shit, what was it called? A sundrop. Sundrop. I'll give you that because uh, you remembered it. Oh my god. Yes. I, I make it look like that. And I'm like, was it this flower, darling? Yeah. Like Roy you... Roy kind of like laughs a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck finding one of those. Ignoring him completely. I just ask, have you ever seen one of these or had Maybe they told you where they are when you dreamed of them? I ate it. You ate it? Yeah. Right. It sounded like a good idea at the time. I'm sure it was. Do, do you know where they were when you ate them? It's only one. All right. They come when Belloth cries. Ooh. Ah, uh, Okay. There was something in the puzzle that sounded like a tear at the end. A I... drop of divine sorrow. A shimmering reminder of the heart's depth. Hmm. I am absolutely. So do we have to, to make later. Beloth said? Or like sure if... Tamina? <laughs> Does she even have feelings? I mean, yeah, I think Bella might be a bit, a bit, a bit. Making Bella sad is doable. Making Tamina sad <laughs> that seems much less likely. That being said, uh, if we do have to make Bella sad, not it, because I'm pretty sure if I do that again, she's gonna kill me. I'm not doing <laughs> it. I, I, I pled. I'm, I'm an retractor, so I'm not doing it. That really doesn't seem like it's gonna end well for anybody. I'll kick her in the shins. That's that's Faiza. <laughs> Get off. Mm. Oh, this does not there. seem like a smart idea. Table the god tears. What else do we need? Rev, you were saying something about yeah, the, the tree mm. of the first being. Yeah. Uh so the the dreams that I've been having well, I don't know how to say this, so I'm just gonna say it. Uh they aren't mine. This sounds perfectly healthy and like you are incredibly sane, uh I've... right? The I was gonna say they actually tracks that does not sound very weird considering no. your whole deal. I, I, Unbelievable. I was... <clears throat> Is it too early to start drinking? No. <laughs> okay. He gets up and he's going to go and find himself some wine. So, the dreams, I think, have been a Rev's, uh, Varian's memories. That's how, you know, I've been playing Varian too long. <laughs> I just said a Rev instead of... Right. Uh, uh yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I'm pretty sure they've been Varian's memories. Did you see any old trees? I saw more than that. So, 
there's I I'm sure w well no wait what has Ver Damascus this Gilly I don't think I don't know how much Varian has spoken to you about what happened to him but Damascus you've you've spoken to Varian a lot right we've chatted here and there has he ever told you what happened to him trying to remember that he I think he told me that he was killed wasn't terribly specific on the details did he tell you what he he wasn't specific okay so Varian And I know this because one of my most recent dreams allowed allowed us to speak for the first time. It bridged the gap between whatever, wherever Varian is inside of me, and we talked. And... That, that poor kid was murdered. He was murdered in a ritual at the foot of the Tree of Ancient Whispers. Or, I mean, well, that's what we call it now. Roll me a it's... history check. Anyone who who wants to after that being said. I mean, <laughs> Gilly, you would have no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to roll it. You said I could roll, roll it. it. Yeah, roll it, roll it. There's... <laughs> 21. You might have heard something. Oh, 21, okay. 17. <laughs> that's not bad. 11. Okay, 21. 21. Something goes through your head and you're not sure where it came from. Because the memory of the person that told you is gone. But the tree of three begins to almost echo in your head. The tree of three? Yeah. And when you say that, you uh, roll me an insight. Uh, roll me? Roll me? Yeah, an insight. He's back. Wow, my history was so much better. Um, you have a bardic inspiration. From, oh, you do. Um, Rave at the end, if you want to use it. For this. Up to oh, you. I, I think somebody gave me a guidance earlier too. Yeah, sorry, guidance, not bardic. Okay. Um. Well, yeah, I'll take the guidance. It's one d four. So twelve plus two is fourteen. Uh. Roy tenses up just a little bit. This is the worst day I have ever had in my entire no, this is this is where do you where did you hear this term? The term Tree of Ancient Whispers. Okay, and that term the tree of three? That's term. Yes, that's term. Uh, I, Roy, and like, I, I walk up to Roy, and I know he's been, probably didn't even pour the wine into a glass. He's probably just been drinking out of a bottle. Um, But I, I put my hand on his shoulder and I go, cousin. I don't remember. Does Tree of Three mean something to you? It's on your... F he's, he's almost swore there and he stops himself. It's on your crest. It's like like you... my, my knighthood's crest? 
Yeah. And when you go to look at your crest, if you look very closely, you will see that there is, it's it's a tree, but very closely you'll see that there are outlines that you have to really like investigate to see that the tree is almost overlined three times. Why? Well, Roy, why? What's this about? What don't what don't I know? Everything apparently. So much. I... Gromea has been telling me what Ray Bella will need. Should she take over? The tree of three is uh, one tree in three parts in Rhea. The first tree. The tree of reincarnation. They are all called the tree of reincarnation. The tree of... um. Insanity and the tree of ancient whispers. They are the same tree, but they are never, they can be in the same, all three places at once or change. There is always a tree there, but maybe it is not the tree that you need. It... You're you're telling me the 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 tree of Rhea, the founding tree, if you will, is three separate trees sharing the same space. Mm. And they are in or around one in each big city. Rhea. Hey, it's like you and Varian. But trees. Ovara. <laughs> Implications. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there's a tree of reincarnation of ancient whispers and of insanity huh yes interesting I wonder which one of those applies to each of my personalities anyways <laughs> <laughs> uh... the tree of insanity has been dead for a long time it used to bring death in the gay it uh, was said to be in Apna's valley I mean there's something very funny Roy about what happens when things go unobserved. You're going to finish that thought or are you just going to leave me hanging here? I'm saying that when people forget to pay attention, sometimes the unthinkable happens. It's very mysterious. Well... You're the one who just said the Tree of Insanity hasn't shown up for a long time. I did not say it has not shown up. I said it was dead. If I haven't seen you, Roy, or heard from you, or known what your actions could be doing outside of where I'm paying attention, I might as well think that you were dead. 
And I'm saying maybe we as a people have forgotten how to pay attention to the signs of the tree of insanity. Are so you that, that this is something that we want to open up? Does that sound said, like a good time to you, Arev? No, Roy. It doesn't sound like a good time. What I was trying to get across to you is that maybe we've been misjudging what's been happening because we've forgotten how to look in the way that we need to. You are are you no, Roy, are you telling me everything that has happened to Rhea over the past what, seven thousand years? Ten thousand years? That everything for ten thousand years has been perfect. That everything has been exactly what it needs to be. That is we've been looked after, that we've had a guardian, that we've had some sort of protector. When you every say step that, of the way, when you say that, you're definitely ruffling his feathers, because that's what the eldest druid is supposed to be. It is what it is, Arif, and we yeah. have done our best. You know, Roy, it is what it is, and we've done our best, and you've given. I have what? We've done our best. And you have a daughter who is born in the likeness of the first eldest druid. That has never happened. So have we, have we done our best? Can you actually look at me in my eyes while your daughter is in the room with us and tell me that you have done, that we have done our best? When you say that, I'm going to roll to see what he takes from that. Yeah. That's, a, that's a full nat one. Um, are you insinuating that she is... He's gonna. He's taking that as you're insinuating that she's evil. Oh, no. I'm not saying that she's evil. I, I, I'm saying... Okay, wait, no. So... Mm, can you... Uh... Hey, DM. Yeah. He, he, I'm Roy, sorry, he got a nat one. <laughs> no, but would Roy say something? Can you can you give me something to go off of? If he if he would say a, something? You choose your next words very carefully. I have done my best for her. A rev already had his hand on his cousin's shoulder and he brings his other one around and just grips his fingers into into his skin and he says Roy I'm saying that you've had this belief your entire life you've had this hope the same way that I have that things have been going well and with your daughter right there you're not telling me that that's not the clearest sign of hope for our future you've ever seen. You're not telling me that with all of the shit that has happened. All of... Do you know why I left home, Roy? No. And Arev angrily shakes, like, shoves him back. Well, he he'll he goes back and he shoves you a little bit and he goes, "Do you think that you are my only concern? I'm you are not the last concern. thing I think about." Perfect, because you want to know what? You're the last thing that I thought about. When I left home, I wasn't looking for you. I wasn't looking for my mother's. I wasn't looking for anything other than what the world has been missing. Look up, Roy. Look up stars again you go with these stars i i take my my telescope like my pocket watch and i slam it into roy's chest it's just like oof look 
Take it and look, Roy. Look at the sky. Now. He's... I'm going to roll him. He, he's not... He doesn't do it. He's just holding this, like, thing, like... Really? Oh, he's pissed. Um... Roll me, roll me perception to see if you okay. catch it because I've rolled for something. Perception. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, you're right in front of him. That's enough. Uh, you see uh, really quickly his eyes kind of flick to your mother. And then back to you. And then this doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? You you went so far as to dismiss the reason that I went home, or left home. There is a, an object touching your chest that will give you proof that we are missing something in this world. Oh, we are missing something. You are missing something. I miss, yeah, of course I'm missing, I'm missing a lot. I'm I'm a human, Roy. I'm, I'm I'm human. I'm surrounded by elves, long-lived people, druids that have lived thousands of years. I I am surrounded by my own people that have a longevity and care for the world. The, that will live well beyond my brief time here, and I've known that since I was a child. My own parents, I expect to outlive me. You, Roy, I expect to outlive me. I, ha I have a brief, a brief dash through the world to try and do something good. And if you're going to tell me that my belief that something good is going to come out of my struggle that i'm i'm missing something in that that fine tell me but I'm... Mm. and you can tell here he's he's getting petty tell me you are not missing something where do you come from or else? And the moment that those those words leave his lips, your mom kind of slams her fork down on the table. And he'll, he shuts up. Mom? Mon amour? What does Roy know that I don't? So many things, my love. I can hear Tans laugh from here. Mom, have I been a good son? A great son. I listen what I'm spoken to. I that do what I'm debatable. I do what I'm told. It's also debatable. What am I? Missing. Give me investigation on Roy. On Roy? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's a four because I suck at investigate. Okay. Um, you don't see it. Yeah. 
let me see if he'll help you out here because it's definitely going the way that he'd rather this conversation go. Yeah, he will. She's only half. Which means that there is another Elvis out there. Yes. And when he says that, Ella's like, Roy! He shrugs. Uh, what? Did you miss that? Who Who is only half? I think this was when you, you stepped away. Raybella is only half of what an eldest druid should be. There's, there's another. Normally, there's only one that's born in a cycle. Said that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I did miss that. Um... Mom, who's the we... other half? I don't know. You want to roll inside of her? I absolutely do. You can have advantage. <laughs> you know her well enough. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, 26. She knows. And she is trying very hard to keep this secret and failing horribly. So Arev has let go of Roy. And he walks over. And I'm assuming my mom is like sitting, right? Mm, she's She's stood up by now. I actually, I walk just slightly past Ella, right? Like, just past my mom. And then once I move past her, I step behind and lean so that our backs are touching. And I I lean my head back ever so slightly and gently, I just go, Mom, do you remember when you taught me on our camping trips how to keep balance? <laughs> you said that... No. You came up to me. And without saying a word, walked right behind me and pressed your back to mine. And said... When you feel like you are going to fall, remember that my back is here to keep you up. And it always will be. Mom, my back is here to keep you up. And it always will be. Now tell me the truth. Nice of you to have two loving mothers, isn't it? Roy, that's Roy again. You, you speak to your brother very harshly, Arif. My as as James, my brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh. As a rev. Um. Is. He, he is very charming. And that's that's Roy's father. 
uh, Phelis's father. He's very charming. And there has been a couple of times where I have strayed. And you were one of those times, and your sister was another. A rev. Removes his back from his mother's. She stumbles a little bit. He takes two paces forward. And without turning, speaks over his shoulder and just calls to Roy and says, Did you know? Of course I knew. Do you think my father keeps it to himself? He's proud of you. He's proud of me, but he... Keeps you protected. And he's keeps... never been there. No? No? He hasn't been at every ceremony and every graduation you've had. Maybe he does not say anything, but he has been there. The same for Violet. I walk over to Raybella. And I kneel down. Princess. Yeah. Hey. I know that a lot has been said, and you've got very good ears. Mm hmm. Has your father ever taught you about a worry not? A rev reaches back into his quiver and pulls an arrow out. And uh, just by the fletching at the top, you see like not one, not two, but like 15 or 16 tied off blue threads. Um, some older, some newer, um, most with frayed tips. And he holds this arrow up in front of Rebella. But he has arrows like this. Do you know what we what we do? We, we should send out our enemies. <laughs> I I mean, uh, that's one way. Uh, normally, we just, you know, shoot them away from us. And it helps, gives us closure. You tie the knot thinking about what you're worried about, and you shoot the arrow into the distance. If you happen to hit an enemy, then fantastic. Two birds, one stone. But... I'm showing you this one because I want to let you know that your knight worries about a lot. I know I can see it here. You got a frowny face. The frowns are only because I want to make sure that when I smile, it's for the right reasons. You're wrong. Not half. What do you mean? A third. Hmm. 
You're... Do you know where the other thirds are? No. Papa does. This is mad. <laughs> Roy's just like, the kid just keeps throwing me under the bus. Um, I, I hold the arrow out to Raybella. Don't give my child an arrow. Roy? She's fixed. Do you know what she can do? Or are you actually ignorant? I am aware. I am still her father. Here you go, kid. Don't stab an eye out. Roy? She goes immediately and starts running with this arrow. <laughs> um... <laughs> Roy? He's not looking at you. But at this, your mother is very interested as well. Magic time, magic time, magic time, magic time. What magic do I have? Uh... I would like to cast Detect Thoughts. Okay, cast Detect Thoughts. What's Ray thinking right now? Or Roy, excuse me. Uh... I was like, Ray, what? <laughs> uh, you know what he, you know what you catch? Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if we were older? Upon a, it, it's a play on words. Wouldn't it be nice? Interesting. Interesting. Oh, that's the name of a place. That's a tavern or something. 100% that's a tavern or something. Um. Do you tell anyone? Uh, I will just say it. Wouldn't it be nice? You got a death glare. That's what he's uh, thinking about. A rev. A rev. Yes. That's a brothel and thon. Yeah, I I was <laughs> I literally I, w I went over to the Discord. I'm like, this is familiar. Where is this from? And I because I was trying to go through oh, it's not listed anymore. It's there. In the Thon City stores, old well, battle mm -hmm. all close minded iron cloud electrics from magician. Leave it to me. Oh, maybe Crushed. it's not. It, it's uh, it's yeah, it should be. It wasn't in the list. The brothel, wouldn't it be nice? Yes, that's it. Okay, what? Why are you really, Roy? You can't school your thoughts away from a Rothel in the middle of this conversation. Yep. Yes, yes, that is exactly what I am thinking about right now. Why? Where, where is the last place someone would look for an elder druid? A young girl needs to keep hidden. Okay. Roy is avoiding eye contact at all costs. Roy? No. Nope. Roy, tell me you don't have two other daughters. No, I do not. Insight, please. Roll. Okay. <laughs> 18. He doesn't. Hey, Masrix, have you ever visited? Wouldn't it be nice? Uh, not that I'm aware of. But, uh, maybe. Not that you have. You haven't. You haven't. <laughs> what did you, what's, what, what'd you catch up? What'd you get, Dan? Who else is there? I don't know. You know who might that. have? Without, without a rev knowing it, who? The person who occasionally takes over his body. Oh, <laughs> that would be really funny. Oh my god, 
I feel yeah, like that actually, would violate some boundaries. But like that, that only seems inappropriate. That, that only started, started recently. Started you're right. You're right. Recently. Shit. So my first thought was a rev wouldn't do that. Varian sure as fuck would. Nah, Varian would tr- Varian would try and charm people. I never said he'd pay, but he would visit. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh this is a conversation. You should you should just go there later and see what is there and just not talk to me about this at all anymore. Please. Are they both there? The other two? Yeah, you are dense. She... That's okay. You know, it's fine. And at this, Ella is just like, like, Violet is another one. For fuck's sake. Who has Violet? That's the sister, right? They mentioned the sister. My sister? You have a Mm -hmm. sister? Yeah. My... She is the key's daughter. Raybella is Roy's daughter. It is the same bloodline. So I do not know about this third one. And she's looking at Roy. I have. It's just. It's not. I feel like this is something you should discover on your own, together, as a family. Um, I just, uh, maybe you've got another sister, Rev. He starts drinking. This certainly is family building times, isn't it? (laughs) Uncovering all the dirt. Third. Violet? Roy? Is it? What? Stop talking to me. Hey, 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 Roy. No. How's your dad doing? He's fine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he uh, he he visit. Wouldn't it be nice any time over the last year? He does not have to pay. So yes is the answer. No. You don't even have to. You don't even have to roll for that. He's just, the the eye roll is just like yeah, whatever. Does you owe me for this one, brother? Does Amelia spark a bell? Oh shit. Oh my god. Speaking of memory problems. You you okay? <laughs> uh a rev leaves the room. Yeah. Roy drinks a little bit more. He's really uncomfortable. He's starting to turn red. No, yeah, no, he, he, I I walk out, I walk out, I walk to my room, I shut the door. Immediately, you can hear the voices, you can hear your mom's pitch, just yelling at Roy. For the record, this whole time, Gilly has been furiously trying to engage Raybella in just any activity she can think of to distract her. I don't think it's working very well, but that's what no. She's, she's like she's corner. like playing patty cake with you while looking over her shoulder. <laughs> An effort has been made. Damascus uh, and Faza have been talking telekinetically, and just like, oh my god, can you, you believe, believe he did this? That? Oh my god, can you believe she's you hear that? you hear uh, like <laughs> Faza's like, wait, 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 wait. That was his first girlfriend, right? Yeah, with the with the the lavender hair, the fey one, one right? Nowhere, yeah. The Fae Glamour. Tell us about the Fae Glamour. And then... 
Uh, yep. From a Rev's room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all you hear is. <laughs> Did you actually? He thinks scream? those walls are a little thicker than they are. <laughs> you think magical I, walls would be? I I projected, but I didn't actually scream. My volume was like my talking volume. <laughs> it totally cut off, cut out here. Yeah, it was uh, just, no. <laughs> just one one giant scream. Um, I I unless you want to try and find out who, I think that's a good place to cut cut the session. Um, oh, and it, we'll, oh, it gives me questions reveal. for next time. We'll mm-hmm. pick it up in in not next week, but the week after. Oh damn! Perfect <laughs> time for a two week hiatus. Right, the timing. Listening to stress. Oh, I love um, it. And uh, yeah, I'm Ice New Stars, and I've been your shenanigan sovereign. Uh, <laughs> James, take it away. Hi, I'm James. Uh, I don't really have a much higher pitched voice when you talk to me, like in real life. So this is me. I talk kind of nasally ish. Uh, versus. Arab Dezark, who talks from his chest and uh, is a bit of a slow talker. So uh, thanks for tuning in for all of my uh, heartache on display and uh, sticking with me through my uh, emotional tirade. Uh, you can find me as Mazrix or Mazrix24 if you want to hang out with me uh, pretty much throughout the internet, most notably in our Discord, Discord, Discord. Uh, links will be in chat. Um, also, I apologize. I sing all the time. Unironically, it's terrible. Um, ah, oh. your turn, Carol. Who? Who? Oh, me. Hello, <laughs> Carol. Yeah, you. I'm Carol. Uh, imaginary Carol. Corner Carol. You can find me. Um, I play Gilly, and I have been just furiously, spiritually eating popcorn. Dan. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I have been the Mask of Silver, the Half-Elf Bard Warlock. And um, I genuinely thought that calling a Elder God to do our homework for us was going to be the most interesting thing that happened this session. <laughs> I'm so glad I was wrong. Okay. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Uh, check in next week for Dan's one shot. I love you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>